Top Trader is brought to you by Sanlam iTrade and powered by Pyrrhus, now with a new Iris trading platform. the conversation on Twitter. Our Twitter handle at TopTraderTV and please use the hashtag hashtag TopTrader2012. You can also visit www.toptradertv.coza. The pecking order had changed dramatically last week with Gary dropping to fourth place and Jared's high risk high reward strategy taking him to the coveted number one position. Hello boys. Since we last saw each other, you guys have had a lot of homework on your hands. You've had to do two challenges for which you'll be doing presentations today. The first being the Discovery Challenge, and then the second, the Africa Challenge. But first up, it's time to find out how trading has been going so far. The first order of the day for the contestants is facing Narina for feedback on the progress of their portfolios. Joining her is Gerard Lampen, head of Sunlam iTrade, with more helpful tools for the contestants. How's the last two weeks been for you, Zaire? <laughs> Not what I needed to, to get me uh, on top, but um, yeah, as, as I said, I mean, it was a little, I mean, the market itself was down um, yeah. two weeks ago with, with all of the mining problems and the resource yes. stocks getting hit. Looking very smart today, sir. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very important day. It's, it's just an important day. Tell us it's more. An day. Tell us more. What's today all about? Uh, today is the day where I have to justify what happened with Discovery. I've been trying to take from what you said last time about increasing size. Yes. Um, I've been getting into bigger positions, which uh, ups the stress levels. <laughs> up the stress levels significantly this morning as well. I've significantly beefed up my positions where now I've got positions, you know, in excess of 100,000 yeah. in terms yeah. of the account. Now, Masa, I think what you've been doing has been working well. It certainly has improved your profitability also. Um, and just keeping a tight discipline and rein on those stop losses and, yeah. and watching it carefully, you are in a position that you can do it. So um, it should, should continue to work in your favour. Have you made losses? Actually, um, <laughs> I haven't made a daily loss for quite a while now. But I actually made my first loss on a trade in quite a while during exam period now because I wasn't able to be sitting watching the markets. Yeah. So I bought in the morning, I went in, I got back home three, four hours later and I saw I had a loss. But luckily I saved my daily gains to be positive. The, the main thing with technical is there's so many different techniques and yeah. um, that, that puts me a little bit off in that you need to spend yes. a lot of time in terms of looking yeah. at all of the different yeah. graphs. So I mean, as you say, if it's, if it's like something that's, that's not too complex in terms of identifying the basic yeah. things, I wouldn't mind adding that to my yeah. strategy. I <laughs> didn't follow the technical <laughs> indicators that are showing me that, you know, Discovery is not necessarily the best buy at that price. Uh -huh. I went guns to the wall on it and, uh, you know, I didn't get out at the right time. So I took a bit of a loss and I learned my lesson that mm. you stick Good. to what you know. Trading is very personal. So a lot of these battles you fight are like with yourself sort of. Feedback actually went quite well. It was one of the first uh, first times I wasn't in trouble. I've averaged 22,000 Rand profit a day. My goal, which is like 20,000 a week, so I made like 15, 16, I'm not sure. After the feedback session, it was off to the boardroom with David Shapiro. He introduces the contestants to the world of international markets. As far as international markets are concerned, if I had my way, I would be invested 100% offshore. And I'm going to discuss why. It's not, uh, there's, there, there's nothing wrong with South Africa. There's nothing wrong with Iran. It's got nothing to do with that. It's just that internationally, you've got far more exciting companies that exist here. But already, by investing in the JSE, you're already in international markets. Just before I came here, I extracted the JSE all share index. Well, I didn't do the complete all share index. I took the top 125 capitalized companies, you know, the top 100 uh, largest companies, and I had a look at them and uh, said, well, how much of those are already offshore? How many of those are onshore? So the biggest company by capitalization, even though it doesn't have the same weighting in the SWIX and the all share, is British American Tobacco, which is eight and a half billion rand. 
Okay, that makes up about 12.5% of the JSE. So already we're at 12.5%. SAB comes next, 6 billion, 9%. So 21%, the first two companies, got nothing to do with South Africa. So the point I make is that in the first uh, 10 companies, we have 55% of, uh, f the first 10 companies make up 55%. So you're already offshore. In the same way that we can access international clothing brands at a store, or international entertainment on TV, the concessions are now there for us to trade in international companies. And it can be done from anywhere in the world. I'm not knocking the JSC, I'm not knocking any other companies because if you'd been invested in the JSC over the last 10, 12 years, your returns have been phenomenal, far better than anywhere else. Far better than anywhere else in the world. But things change. And now you've got to start looking at the next 10 years. Where are the best yields going to be um, you know, going to be achieved. And the thing is that because the JSC has run so far ahead that our, our, our metrics or our measures are far higher than offshore markets. So for the first time, offshore markets are actually looking a lot cheaper. And dividend yields are nice and high and juicy as well because of the problems they've gone. I would rather have my money in a company like Coca-Cola or Nestle's than in the US government. You know, <laughs> I trust I trust Nestle with my with money and handling money and their products far better than I do the U.S. government or certainly the European government. You mentioned the the main markets, the American, the big exciting companies. Mm. But as as a long term investor, you're a hundred percent right. Mm. As a trader, they very um, what are not volatile. The mm. volatility is very yeah. low, mm. and um, the exciting markets in, in Africa have a much higher volatility ratio, and uh, the profit in a short term is far greater. Yeah, you, you know, it's it's uh, it's relative. I'm not I from a trading point of view. You'll always find small caps. Sure. We're going to give you greater volatility, greater profits, whether you're in the U.S. Wherever you are, it's the small companies on which you're going to be able to, to, make, your, uh, to make your big trades. So that, I'm not going to dispute that. And I'm saying from a trading point of view, of course, you learn your little universe and you stick to those rules. I'm talking, I think what I wanted to talk about was more from an international point of view. You know, one day you might actually raise billions. You know, you're obviously, you're, uh, you don't want to limit where you're going. So if you happen to be a trading company, a hedge fund, and you start to attract large money, it's going to be very difficult to trade the way you're trading. So you're going to have to broaden the horizons. So the best way to play it is to, is to buy companies you know. In other words, and I use this for Africa as well. From my point of view, the best way to play Africa is South Africa. It's via South Africa. We know ShopRite. You know, we know MassMart. We know our construction companies, Wilson Bailey Homes, as they go into either Africa or they're going into Australia in a big way, but so on. So rather buy companies you know that are expanding into those areas, then try find domestic companies. So how do we play China? How do we play India? How do we play the emerging market? Through Western companies or through, that's a Western world, I think that's, a, that's an old world, through developed companies that we know that are expanding into those areas. I mentioned some of them already. So you'll find um, in many cases, 30, 40% and a growing amount is coming from emerging markets. So you feel far safer with that management handling it than trying to find a similar kind of company in the emerging market. What is the ramifications for our market if investors like us who are currently trading in the JSC all of a sudden leave the JSC and we all start trading the world as you said? I mean, the, the, the South African market, the, the volumes are going to obviously decrease unless it's as competitive. I, I, it's, it's their challenge. You know, I, it's their challenge. It's the same thing when you go into shops, you know, and you look on the shelves, and uh, if it's made in China, you're going to buy it. You know, it's a nice looking uh, suit, whatever it is, it's at a very reasonable price, you're going to buy it. Rather than say, listen, I'm going to the South African Virgin, which is three times as much. So that's, the local manufacturers, in this case a local stock exchange, has to adapt itself and try to find a way that it can keep you in. Look, it's not going to fall apart because there are going to be a lot of people It's too much bother to actually look offshore. You know, uh, listen, I'd rather buy a portfolio here. But if you notice, our market is becoming narrower and narrower. There are fewer and fewer large companies to buy. You know, and, and, and the smaller companies are also not going to get the, the 
support of the institution. So the institution flows as well are going offshore. You know, at least most of, most of our large institutions, at least 25% of their, of their investments are now based offshore. And uh, the balance is mainly in the large caps that we're talking about. The beauty about the international market, if you start to go into various other trading strategies which you haven't gone into now and we haven't offered, once you start in the options markets, the derivative markets, all of those, there are far greater opportunities than here. Much, much greater. You can write options, you know, you can buy options, you can do everything. And it's a very liquid, vibrant market. So, you know, you, you'll find if you genuinely like trading and you enjoy trading, I mean, the opportunities are, are endless there as well. But that's a full-time job. <laughs>